OK. Cool. Bonjour tout le monde. Je suis content que vous soyez venus pour... Oh, wrong language. Yes. <laughs> so, all of y'all, uh, my name is Marc Tessier, and I'm a uh, network engineer. And as you probably can tell from my accent, I'm from up yonder. So I'm actually a uh, French Canadian from uh, Montreal, Canada. And uh, I've been living 30 years in uh, Georgia, but uh, I, I guess I just haven't picked up this out in role yet. <laughs> so I'm working on that. <clears throat> so I used to uh, install uh, wireless internet in uh, upscale hotels across North America. Uh, so I basically was traveling uh, 30, 35 weeks of the year, kind of thing, flying out on a Monday, hoping to fly back on a Friday if uh, things go well at the, at the site for the installation. And uh, I had uh, met a neighbor, uh, actually, that lives just a few houses down the street from where I live. And uh, together, we had this idea of uh, building some goofy electronic devices for geocaching. So uh, that's how uh, I got started in uh, Arduinos. And uh, those uh, electronic geocaching machines uh, became escape room props when the escape room uh, boom started kind of thing. And uh, we did a few. Uh, of those uh, that are have been in uh, some escape rooms across the U.S. that we're uh, really proud. Um, another achievement that uh, we we did just because uh, two guys with uh, too much time on a weekend in their hands and a few good beverages uh, decided to build an electric car from uh, from scratch. <clears throat> so we're in Georgia, so we picked up a uh, pickup truck and uh, removed the uh, internal combustion engine and the uh, gas tank and uh, a bunch of stuff and uh, converted it to uh, an Arduino controlled uh, electric car. So it uh, took a lot of uh, lead acid batteries and uh, it worked for a while. It wasn't fast, uh, wasn't amazing, but uh, the, the project was a success and we had fun. But what I'm here to talk about today is uh, my journey through a couple of Kickstarter campaigns and something that uh, totally, totally surprised, uh, surprised me and uh, my partner and certainly never expected uh, anything of that, uh, any success of that magnitude. So um, we're coming back in uh, summer 2013 and uh, there's a, a mega event at uh, FDR uh, State Park uh, a geocaching, a geocaching mega event, and we decided, uh, my partner and I, that it'd be nice to use our geocaching devices along uh, a, a path where people would pick up encrypted messages, and then at the end, they'd have to decrypt the message to win or uh, or successfully finish our game, kind of thing. So I uh, wanted to find how can I encrypt a secret message. I had no idea how uh, I would get this done. So uh, a friend of mine suggested, uh, well, Mark, why don't you use an Enigma machine? I said, Enigma, what is that? Well, he went on to explain that the Germans in the Second World War were using the Enigma as a uh, encoding machine to send each other secret messages about their plans on, uh, for, for battle. So I said, okay, well, that's great, I'll buy one. Uh, no, you just can't buy one. They're, they're not on the market, and when you can, when you're lucky to find one, you can expect to pay uh, upwards of hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's a uh, hundred times more uh, money than I could uh, put in that venture. So uh, okay, so no problem. I'll buy a kit, and we'll build a kit. Well, guess what? There's no kit, so that uh, that didn't work out uh, either. So, okay, so what are we going to do? So we decided that let's build our own, using Arduino, of course, again. Uh, started that process, uh, and after a couple of months, uh, we had a, a, a prototype that was uh, working. Software was uh, by far, by far, the hardest piece of the puzzle. The wiring of LEDs and, uh, and buttons and, and stuff is not, uh, is not that bad, uh, but uh, the, the software. So, uh, and I told my business partner, I said, listen, you, you take care of the hardware and the software, but all my job is gonna be to find how the Enigma machine works and how the keys 
the, the rotors are coded, okay? And I'll work on that, da, da, da. Well, there's a uh, website out there that's uh, uh, cryptomuseum.com that's got the whole thing explained step-by-step -step, rotor, each rotor, how they're positioned and what they do. So 15 minutes later, I was done <laughs> with my part of the, uh, of the job and uh, there you go. So no, seriously, uh, so we worked on it and uh, two weeks before the event, uh, the machine was completed and um, we're a Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon on board and I decided to uh, publish a, uh, online a, uh, a website called Instructables. Instructables is a website where I get a lot of my inspiration from. It's people that show other people how to make stuff. So you go over there and you get step-by-step -step instructions on how they built a thing and how you can copy them. So that's exactly what I did. I documented uh, the, I have pictures of every step of the way and we put the schematics, we put the bill of material, we put the code uh, and uh, pictures of every, uh, every step so that anyone could just follow my instructions and, uh, and build their own. Uh, my wife assured me that nobody would care and I was uh, wasting my time. Uh, and yet, the next day, in 24 hours, I have, I've received 10,000 views and now I'm getting messages from around the world saying it is cool, it is awesome, and uh, you know they're looking forward to following the steps and trying to build one, and they're asking uh, a few, uh, you know, a few questions on the, on the schematic or the process. So we're big uh, fans of open source, and Instructables allows us to give back to the uh, community via uh, via opening, you know, open hardware and open software. Uh, so. The event, the geocaching event, uh, the following uh, two weeks after was a dud, but uh, people started asking uh, how much would it cost them for me to build a unit for them. Well, I didn't have time for that. I'm, I'm flying to different hotels to install my internets. So uh, in an effort to tell them to uh, put more effort of their own part, because a big part of DIY is the why, right? Do it yourself. <laughs> so it's not a do it for me. So I said it's a thousand dollars. Okay, partner said, Mark, if we're going to have to build another one of these, I'm going to want a thousand bucks. So okay, so it's a thousand bucks. Go away. Well, they didn't go away. They didn't go away. The checks are coming in. The PayPal. And, and now it's like, oh lord. Okay, so uh, now I'm. I'm liable, okay? I, I, I got to produce something. Uh, so, and then uh, the orders are coming in uh, at a, you know, pretty, uh, pretty steep uh, pace. So, how many raw material do I need to order to fulfill? What if I have five more orders? So, what am I, how, how am I going to do this? And I got a flight to catch Monday, so, um, to my hotel. So, Okay, so we decided to launch a Kickstarter campaign. We're figuring, we're figuring that in 30 days, if we raise $25,000, that should be pretty impressive. And uh, because we certainly don't expect that be that much of a market for a device that's 70 years old. There's more encryption capabilities in, in your cell phone and there's a free app that does it, right? That does the whole thing. So why, why would people pay a thousand dollars? Well, we reached that goal in the, the twenty-five thousand dollar goal in a, a matter of a week. Uh, finished the campaign with sixty-five, sixty-four thousand dollars kind of thing. And then, as the campaign ends, I'm getting email from people apologizing that they missed the campaign. Could I still take their money and, and make one? So. Uh, Long story short, uh, this is, was nine years ago, uh, 2013. I'm still making Enigmas on a weekly basis. I'm at serial number 228 right now. I've shipped them to 35 different countries. I absolutely never, never expected that there'd be 
that many people that are fan of, uh, of, of this device or my work and uh, it still amazes me to, to this day. And people ask me, why? What, what, what do people do with this? And I tell them, I have no idea. There's a free app, right? So bottom line, uh, I figured out that I've got three types of customers. I've got definitely the uh, war buffs that uh, are, uh, are excited about World War II and uh, historic. Uh, I've got the uh, rich people that just want a trophy on the mantle to show that they have something that you just can't find anywhere. And I've got the enthusiast uh, electronics that uh, find the look attractive and uh, are like mesmerized by, by the appeal of the aesthetics of, of it all, which just is a flu kind of thing, right? Uh, we mimicked it. Uh, our the original one, but of course we're using uh, Arduinos and LEDs, so it's you know it's it's solely it's a, its own thing. So anyway, those 200 backers uh, on Kickstarter uh, meant that uh, now I got to fulfill right. So now I, I definitely know how many how many raw materials I need. Uh, I have the money up front. And now it's a matter of, uh, of building these units and uh, shipping them in a timely manner. Well, I don't know if you know, but uh, building one of these is uh, just the electronics is four hours kind of thing. And uh, the wooden boxes, that's, uh, that can easily take a week to, uh, to build. So I didn't, uh, I didn't plan on shipping 200 weeks later, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, had a, uh, I gave myself I thought I gave myself a ton of buffer, right? So, okay, I should be done by... So the campaign uh, we launched was in February, ended in March. I figured, okay, March, April, May, June. Yeah, I should be done in June. Well, let's say July, August. Okay, so by the end of August, I, I'm going to deliver everything. And uh, turns out that these two extra months... Uh, <laughs> we're not extra, uh, we're absolutely uh, essential, but I'm very, very proud to say today that we are, this was one of the very few Kickstarter campaigns that was fulfilled on time, on schedule, uh, no delays for uh, any backers. Uh, one of our backers is uh, Adam Savage from uh, Midbusters. Uh, I've had uh, a few uh, museums that uh, have ordered the uh, units. Uh, been featured in the IEEE uh, electronics uh, magazine and uh, yeah so uh, also uh, the uh, there's a bar in London that opened they're called the Bletchley for Bletchley Park which is where uh, Alan Turing and his team worked to uh, decrypt the Enigma and build his uh, Bombi and that bar ordered 12 of these units from me uh, in one shot way, way after the Kickstarter campaign, uh, and uh, are using them to this day, so it's been two years, three years, uh, and are using them to this day uh, to provide a unique experience to their uh, customers when they order drinks. So, and uh, from what I heard, if you manage to decode the top, uh, the top encryption, da da da, you get a free drink and, and so on. So, uh, they uh, didn't give me too many details about how they're using it, but uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, because it just turns out that if you want an Enigma, there's the real ones, and there's this one. There's basically no other alternative, or there's a free app, right? Uh, so uh, basically, I turns out that I own the market. Worldwide, so I've shipped to Germany. I've shipped to uh, France. As a matter of fact, the uh, French defense government has uh, has bought three units from me. So I have to ask, I said, guys, right? Can, would you mind? Would you mind telling me <laughs> what uh, what's the purpose? And uh, they did tell me uh, it's for uh, education. So they they train uh, their. Um, folks on, uh, on uh, the Enigma, so for history, and also they give them to, uh, as a retirement present to, uh, to some of the uh, 
high, high muckety mucks, right? So, okay. So uh, that's basically uh, the story of the uh, Enigma machine. And uh, I, I tell you, I have never done a Kickstarter. Uh, we do no marketing, no uh, publicity, and just people find me through, uh, through Google kind of thing. And being, in a op being open source has allowed me to be featured in a whole bunch of magazines, and that's how uh, and Instructables brought a ton of eyeballs. I also put uh, one on eBay, and that brings, sorry, that brings also a ton of uh, eyeballs. So uh, that's uh, that's how uh, that happened. Uh, can, I ask, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. So there used to be somebody on Etsy that was selling them, and they disappeared. You know, you think about who that was, or maybe they were just using the open source parts and doing it themselves. This is a couple years ago. On Etsy? Etsy, and they haven't, you can't find him the hmm. last two and a half years. No. I know of a uh, Canadian that uh, has made one of his own that looks uh, suspiciously, uh, suspiciously close to mine, hmm. but I'm open source, so, and that's okay. I, it turns out that I don't need a patent, I don't need to worry about any of that. It, takes a fair amount of time, talent, and tools to make your own, so uh, that's okay. More, uh, you know, more power to, uh, to somebody that, you know, I'm, I inspire from Instructables, uh, you know, myself, so I, that's okay. Uh, so fast forward to uh, 2018. Uh, we're uh, a year before the uh, 50th anniversary of man landing on the moon. So. A Enigma customer of mine suggested, Mark, why uh, don't you guys make a D-ski? Uh, I said, D-ski? What is that? <laughs> okay. So he explains to me that the Apollo guidance computer display keyboard, or D-ski for short, is a device that uh, was mounted in the command module. As a matter of fact, there was two in the command module and uh, one in the uh, lunar module. And it's the computer, basically, that put man on the moon. So, okay, so we look at some uh, historical pictures of these, and guess what? It's a couple of buttons and a whole bunch of LEDs. <laughs> oh, hey, well, you had me at LED. So, uh, all right, so we gotta make one of those. So, and surprise, surprise, we use an Arduino, okay? Little, uh, $5 Arduino. So this uh, Enigma is using like a, a $10, $15 Arduino. More, uh, more, uh, more buttons, more lights. The uh, D-Ski uh, is just using a little Arduino Nano. So it's a $5, $6 chip. And uh, however, uh, it takes 100 hours to 3D print the case. So uh, it's something important if you're planning maybe to launch a Kickstarter campaign and you want to fulfill in time, uh, you kind of need to uh, keep an eye on, on, on that time. Uh, so yeah, it takes, uh, takes me a few hours to uh, do the electronics, to assemble the electronics, and then uh, the printers are busy uh, for 100 hours. Uh, yes? How many printers do you have? So I currently have uh, 12 uh, 3D printers. Six of them are Prusa. And if uh, I may uh, use this moment to, uh, to tell all of y'all that the Prusa printer is the Rolls Royce, in my opinion, of the entire FDM uh, filament deposition model, right? Uh, which is a filament that's melted down uh, of, the, of the industry, okay? They're workhorses, they work every time, they are reliable. It's still not like a laser printer or toaster, okay? Uh, 3D printers tend to, uh, to be finicky, but the Prusa is the less finickiest of them. Uh, which is something I wish I had known when we started uh, 3D printing to fulfill our campaign, because we started with Creality's CR10s, a uh, Chinese knockoff kind of thing, and uh, not as dependable, reliable, and so on. And when you're running a production that every eight hour 
you need to uh, remove the uh, the print and start another one. So that's uh, three cycles a day. So uh, the wife would do the early morning, and then I do the afternoon and the evening, and then the next morning she she would get it start remove the print, get it started for the next one. So. Uh, I'm jumping a bit all over the place now, but uh, so my uh, Kickstarter campaign in 2018, we figured $25,000 should be a good goal in 30 days. Uh, so uh, we launched a campaign, and uh, surprise, surprise, within three days, four days, uh, we, uh, we meet our goal and ended that campaign with uh, something like $85,000. Again, my trick was to publish an Instructables, and this time I knew that if I publish Instructable close to the Kickstarter, then the eyeballs don't go away. They just, oh, it's too much effort to build one, DIY, right? Mm -hmm. So do it for me. Oh, and then there's a Kickstarter campaign right now. So they jump to the Kickstarter, and then they place their order. So, uh, and that uh, worked out because uh, the campaign ended at 85K or so, to our huge, huge surprise. And then sales kept going on for another uh, 160 some uh, to this day. So, uh, I'm at serial number 123 in the uh, D-Skis. And, and as many kits, right? The, the, the kits are, are still very, very popular because uh, we provide kits from, you know, from $40 that gives you just the uh, printed circuit board and you buy your own components, or, you know, a few more, $200, you have the, the basic components and you supply your own Arduino, and that adult, all the way to the $1,000 for assembled, tested, and, and uh, finished. Uh, in that Kickstarter campaign, we uh, figured, hey, uh, what if we build one of real aluminum? So it's got the feel of the original real Disky display keyboard found on the, uh, the command module and the lunar module. And uh, not knowing exactly how much it would cost, how much effort, da da da, we said, why not ask $8,000 uh, for a Disky? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Sold two of these. Uh, <laughs> It just shows that, and, and maybe at the thousand dollars for the Enigma, I'm leaving money on the table because I do not know, right? If if it was fifteen hundred, would I sell less or as many? But uh, th those are numbers that uh, you know came up and uh, arbitrarily, essentially. So raw materials account for uh, you know a portion of that and the labor, right? Of course. So uh, the uh, so again, close to 200 backers. So you remember the 100 hours, right, of, uh, of printing. Uh, so again, learning uh, lessons from the uh, prior campaign. We launched this in January of uh, 2018 uh, because we wanted to fulfill by the end of 2018 so they would have it in their hands for the 50th anniversary of the moon landing in 2019, right, from uh, 1969. So. Uh, we figured uh, four months, depending on how many orders, should be enough. Add a buffer. Da, da. Uh, so my latest deliveries, were, the uh, campaign was, was supposed to be uh, delivered by uh, something like September. And, uh, and worst comes to worst, I, I said, I got absolutely delivered by Christmas, right? right. Uh, turns out, by the, uh, my date in September, very proud to say, another campaign on Kickstarter that was fulfilled at, on schedule, on time. And uh, so it keeps, uh, you know, when I, I'm a super backer on Kickstarter, and when I back something, I, I would like people to respect their delivery dates. I, I do understand that things come up, and specifically the, the few latest Kickstarter campaigns with COVID-19 and uh, Ukraine uh, going on, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, and, and supply chain issues all over the world uh, can, can definitely affect, but, uh, you know, it's nice to try to deliver in time. So, Smithsonian, Air and Space uh, Museum Magazine, uh, featured uh, my D-Ski for the uh, 50th anniversary, and I have a few uh, museums uh, uh, around the world that uh, bought one. So, Tampa, 
South Carolina, uh, and uh, a few in, uh, in Europe. So we're always tinkering. Uh, I can't give too much information uh, without uh, getting you to sign uh, a non-compete or a uh, NDA, non-disclosure agreement, but it's open source. So uh, once it's done, anybody uh, can follow my step-by-step -step instructions on Instructable and build their own. Or uh, if they don't uh, DIY, then I'll uh, DI for you. So, uh, and uh, that's basically uh, my story. I'm an open book, so please ask any question and I'll be happy to, uh, to answer. Yes? We can say I told you so to your wife. Did what? I told you so uh, to your wife. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't miss a chance. So guess what? When, uh, when we built the D-Ski, and uh, so I show her the step-by-step -step process, right? And here we are. Yeah, yeah, okay. And look at this. Now the lights are blinking. Yeah, okay. And okay, now it's finished, and we're going to sell this. And yeah, sure. Well, we're going to launch it on Kickstarter. Really? Why? Uh, so, and, and I didn't know what to expect either, right? So you, who knew? Uh, who knew that there's, you know, yeah, a, a, a eighty-three thousand dollars in a, in thirty days for for a useless. So unless you have a Saturn V rocket, <laughs> like I guarantee you that this this will not, you know. So and and on our Kickstarter campaign, at the bottom of the Kickstarter campaign, we make sure to say we're not responsible for uh, rocket failures uh, using our D ski. Okay. So disclaimer. Okay. Uh, and. Uh, What's your next project? So, so next project is uh, <laughs> is the very first mechanical computing device ever created. Uh, it's like a thousand year old device. An antikythera. That thing. So on that note, I thank you very much. <laughs> 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 yes. Has this become? your business now or how much is this right okay so uh, as I said right I'm, I'm flying on Mondays hoping to fly back on Fridays for my uh, internet's uh, installed in hotels uh, and uh, when uh, when this uh, Kickstarter campaign ended uh, I was fortunate enough that uh, my company decided to close the Georgia office which meant that uh, my job was gonna end and I said, okay, because I don't have time <laughs> to do these internets anymore. So, uh, and that, how I transitioned to doing this full time. So we had to register an LLC uh, because these thousand dollars were, were coming in. Uh, and, uh, and now that's what I basically do full time. Uh, between uh, Enigmas and these keys, and the future project, which I won't name, uh, this, uh, this is basically keeping me uh, busy full time. Uh, doesn't, it, it's not enough to, uh, to, to pay all the bills kind of thing, but uh, it helps and uh, it's, a, it's a fun. So I don't feel like I'm working, right? I'm, I'm playing with my toys all day and in my uh, favorite uh, attire, right? So straight in the, Pajamas uh, to the computer room and just uh, you know solder away uh, these kits and uh, package them and send them to uh, to customers. So. Okay, so you mentioned that you sold two of them <coughs> with aluminum cases, but uh, obviously you're not three D printing those, right? So where did they come from? All right, very good question. Thank you. So using the same LT STL files that this has. Uh, and indeed, we don't have uh, 3D printing uh, of aluminum uh, capability. So uh, we did some research before we came up with that uh, $8,000 number and found that uh, a company in New York called Shapeways. Shapeways has a ton of 3D printers of all sizes, all types, all the models, and they have the ability to print out of copper, aluminum, uh, gold, if you want, silver, by using SLS, 
system which is selective laser centering. So selective laser centering, it's a, a laser beam that points to one grain of aluminum and it melts it to the prior grain and, and it proceeds you know, on a, using the same STL files, pr proceed along, and then you end up with a solid aluminum piece. So we, and uh, it turned out that uh, to build two, to get Shakeways to do two aluminum these keys, uh, costed us close to the uh, $8,000 of, of the first one kind of thing. So uh, it's a good thing we, we sold two. Uh, otherwise, uh, it would have been marginally uh, uh, successful or a failure, whichever side you want to look at. So, uh, so Shapeways is a, uh, and I, uh, I have only good things to say about them. Their service is, uh, is fast. They're professional and uh, they get the job done. And a lot of Etsy shops are using Shapeways because they, uh, if you want, you put your designs on Shapeways and they, they print it, they ship it, and they just send you the check. So it's hands free, you do nothing, you just leave it out there and then they take care of 100% of your business kind of thing. All you have to do is go to your mailbox and to the bank. So. You know, the electronics in your, your printing are pretty impressive, but the woodworking is also pretty impressive. You want to say a word about that? I yeah. Mean, you, do, right. you do all that yourself? Still? All right. So I, uh, I am not a woodworker and uh, would never be right. able to, yes. uh, to build something like this. Luckily, my business partner, James, so I'm a part of S&T Geotronics. James is the S for Sanderson and I'm the T for Tessier. And uh, he is a fantastic woodworker. We did have to buy a, a bandsaw. Uh, we did have to buy a, a planer uh, using the Kickstarter money of the Enigma to build these uh, units. And uh, these two boxes are built out of solid wood. This is uh, cherry and this is uh, mahogany. <clears throat> and uh, along the way, uh, we have moved to laser cutting the, uh, the boxes. So it's a process that's much faster. We get the laser to do all these finger joints because every single finger joint was done by hand. And that's a lot of uh, fingers when you're building, you know, when you're making a hundred of these boxes kind of thing. Uh, so, uh, so we had to buy a, a pair of uh, laser, uh, laser cutters but uh, it allows us uh, to speed up the process and uh, makes, uh, makes it. So the new machines, the new boxes are not as, uh, they're not made out of solid wood, they're not as thick, uh, it's plywood, uh, with a veneer kind of thing. Uh, so it's a little step down, but uh, it, again, you know, it's a, it's a matter of uh, supply chain and uh, getting the wood uh, was was becoming harder and harder to find solid wood, so uh, needed to continue the process. Any other uh, question? This is an AMA. Ask me anything, right? Do, do you get? I mean, having done this a number of times now, building with, does it get repetitive? Does it get boring? Or you still find joy in sort of crafting each one, all of the above? Maybe. Yeah. So. Uh, there's a few steps in the uh, both the Enigma and the Disky that are tedious and very minutia, very precise. So it's wearing the, the glasses and repeating steps. The, uh, the uh, Disky uses a plus minus sign uh, LED, right? They, uh, so they're called seven segments, right? These are 16 segments because you have all the alphabet, so you need 16 different segments to do the alphabet. These are only numbers, so there's seven segments. So uh, when we uh, created our uh, Enigma, uh, we didn't see the purpose of uh, having a clock board because it's, uh, we don't need it and we can do it in software. Well, guess what? Very quickly, uh, people said, what? You implemented the plug board in software? But we, we want it in hardware. We want a real plug board, otherwise it's not an Enigma. Okay, so guess what? We uh, went back to the drawing board and added another PCB so we'd have a functional plug board. So now we have the, the plug board in software 
and hardware, and then you can use a combination, uh, either or or both. So, okay, so I'm gonna, let's say, I'm gonna connect A. Yeah, this is uh, gonna be easier like this, to uh, B, okay? So now every A is uh, gonna be a B, and every B will be an A, right? And I'm also gonna connect a, uh, let's say, uh, I connect our Q to L. So every L is a Q and every Q is an L. One uh, feature of the real Enigma, and, and this is 100% compatible with the uh, three rotor and four rotor Enigma, one of the feature of the Enigma that ended being uh, part of its downfall is that a letter can never be encoded to itself. So you're never, if you type a T, you're never gonna en encrypt it to a T. And that turns out that now you know 25, there's only now 25 possibilities when you're encrypting a character, not 26. So it helps to, on the decryption process. Okay, so I turn my uh, device on, and then I got the marquee. And the marquee is just nice. an advertisement for SNT Geotronics. And uh, there's also an Easter egg at the end. Once it says Enigma Mark IV, okay, then it says DT. All right, so now I'm in double stepping mode. Double stepping mode turned out to be a mistake on the real Enigma, where at some points when one rotor would rotate, it would kick the other one and twice. And now you'd end up one character further away. And we said, well, we're gonna fix that in the software <laughs> because we can. Well, guess what? It didn't take long because people said your real Enigma, your, your, your Enigma replica doesn't encode like the real one that I have on my free app. <laughs> so uh, what's wrong? <laughs> and it turned out that uh, uh, one, uh, one uh, guy in uh, England, I think, uh, said it's, it's your DT. It's your, so we had NDT, right? We had non-double step. And he said that's uh, that's wrong. When whenever the W on rotor three da 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 happens, so we fix that, and now it's 100 percent. Okay, so now it's uh, the marquee is just rolling. Okay, and now I go in mode, and now I'm ready to set my rotors. So now I've got the beta rotor in the first position, and then I've got rotors one, two, and three that are loaded with the B reflector. Okay, so if I press uh, up, okay, now I've got the gamma rotor uh, on the leftmost and still the uh, B reflector. Now I've got the beta with the C reflector, the gamma with the C reflector, and I'm back to where I started, okay? So whenever I turn on my unit, I'm always using beta, one, two, three, four starters. If you want, you can have, you change this to any other rotor, but the Germans only had one set of rotors. So you could not have rotor two, two, and three. They, they didn't have two rotor twos. So when I hit <coughs> up over here, I immediately jump to rotor number four, okay? So, and, and then if I hit down over here, now one is available and eight, but when I get below five, now I, can, I skip four, and I'm gonna skip two to go back to one. Okay, so that's a, uh, my key, right? I'm gonna reboot because I'm gonna return to my B123. That's my basic key that I use for demo purposes. Okay, then I go mode, then I can change the in ring. So inside of the ring is where you position where the letter is gonna start, okay? So that's part of the encryption key. You gotta know inside of the rings what are they. I'm gonna leave them AAA. Uh, the outer ring. So now you decide how you position your ring visually on top, and that's a, uh, a flaw of the operators during World War II that helped the uh, Pol Polish people, po Poland, and the uh, British to decode because some of the uh, communication guys were using the name of their girlfriend. Uh, so uh, one uh, one officer had a girlfriend called Silly, so S uh, S I L I, and that he was repeatedly using that, and then the uh, British were able to deduce from there and, and help decode the uh, the machine. Okay, so mode I'm going to leave it at A A A A, 
uh, and now I'm in the plug. So in the plugs, he's already software offering me C to D because he saw that A to B is already hardwired. So he sees that A to B is there, so he knows that's there, and he says, do you want to go C to D? And I say, maybe E to D or F to D, okay, or G, and I pick. So if I want J to D, then I would press enter, and he'd say, thank you very much. Now I have two plugs that are hardwired, and I would have one in soft, invisible wire. So now, if all you're looking is my, if, if you're trying to, to decode my message and all if you see is my hardware plugs, you do not know my, that I've got software in there, so that, that would uh, make your encryption more difficult. And then I press mode, and now I'm ready to encrypt my first message. So every time you hit the key, the rotors turn, and the next time it's encrypted with a different rotor position. And if, so you need to know the start position of your rotor. So now, if I just type A, B, C, so my A is a B, my B, if I can find it, is uh, over here, is a D. So my A was a B, my B is a D, and C is E. So my encrypted message was B, D, E. So I'm going to go B, D, E, okay? So I power off, I power back on, okay? I didn't change any of my settings, so I go mode, 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 I'm running, and then I type B, D, E, and if my demo is successful, I'm going to have A, B, C. Otherwise, I'll look like a fool, but it's okay. So I'll go with the B. That's a good start. I get an A. I'll go with the D. I got a B, okay, and I'll go with a C, uh, B, D, E. I'll go with an E to get a C. So if I find my E, uh, that is located right here, and I got my C. Got your C. So I decoded my B, D, E back to A, B, C because I started with the same key. Now, if I go A, B, C, I'm not going to get B, D, E because now my key is A, 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 D for starters. So I'm starting at a different position, so I'm going to end up with a different result every single time. But if I reboot, ABC will be BDE with that key. So the key is meant to be complicated, so that allows the millions and millions of possibilities by design. Uh, but nowadays, your, your typical cell phone has way, way, way more encryption capability than this ever had. But it's still, to, to do this in the 1940s with mechanical, there was no computers back then, uh, is really a, uh, you know, a feat. And uh, the original makers uh, are, uh, are, are really uh, geniuses. So that's the uh, demo of the uh, Enigma machine. Let's see if I got good batteries in here. I don't. There's any in there, it's kind of light. Yeah. So uh, at the booth, I uh, I'll replace the batteries, and uh, you can see a demo. That's cool over there. If you, want, if you want. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. This is my very first time doing a talk, and uh, it's uh, it's nerve wracking, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. You did better than a lot of you did better than a lot of people who have done this before. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Have no fear. Well done. Thank you very much. Well done.